Everyone knows that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in April 1865. There was another, however, who was targeted for assassination that same night. His name was William Seward, a man who had a long political career. This is Episode 7 of Abbreviated Bios. William Seward was born on May 16, 1801 to Dr. Samuel and Mary Seward in Florida, New York. Seward graduated from Union College in 1820. He then studied law and became a lawyer in 1822. He would become Judge Elijah Miller's law partner and he began courting Miller's daughter, Frances. Two of the biggest events in Seward's life happened in 1824. The first one was he married Frances Miller. They would be married 41 years and have five children. The second big event was meeting Thurlow Weed in 1824. Weed was a political organizer and would be with Seward in every one of his campaigns. Seward first attained elective office as part of the Anti-Masonic Party. That party was against the Masons as a secret society. Seward would later become a leader of the Whig Party, which opposed Andrew Jackson's policies. Thurlow Weed helped Seward get elected as governor of New York in 1838. During his term as governor, he began to establish himself as an abolitionist when he refused to return fugitive slaves to Virginia in 1839. William Seward was in a lot of debt after leaving the governor's office in 1842. He made back his money as a lawyer, mainly in patent cases. He did, however, defend an African-American in a death penalty case and a farmer who had helped fugitive slaves. Seward was elected to the U.S. Senate from New York in 1848 as a Whig. He opposed the Compromise of 1850, especially the Fugitive Slave Law. He stated that the slave system would either be removed gradually or violently in the Civil War. In the debate, Seward said, There is a higher law than the Constitution, which regulates our authority over the domain and devotes it to the same noble purposes. But the Compromise of 1850 became law anyway. In 1854, Seward was re-elected as a member of the new anti-slavery Republican Party. He began to think more and more of running for president. In 1858, Seward called the struggle between the opposing sides on slavery an irrepressible conflict. However, as he began more and more to think about running for president, he began to moderate his views to try and draw people from uh, both sides. And so you can see in the cartoon where the guy comes up to him and, and says he's selling weaker ale. In other words, he's not as strong on slavery as he used to be. Seward was the leading Republican candidate for president in 1860. However, at the convention in Chicago, opposition to him arose from within the party and Abraham Lincoln was chosen instead. You can see in the cartoon, a drowning Seward is trying to get Horace Greeley to keep his support, uh, but Greeley will not do so. As a loyal Republican, Seward campaigned for Lincoln, and after Lincoln's victory, Seward was chosen to be Secretary of State. When Lincoln proposed to issue an Emancipation Proclamation in the summer of 1862, Seward urged him to wait until the Union won a big battle. At the time, the Union looked like it was losing the war. After the Union won the Battle of Antietam, Lincoln issued the proclamation. Seward used the proclamation effectively to keep Great Britain from allying itself with the Confederacy. On April 14, 1865, Lincoln was assassinated. Yet this was a part of a larger conspiracy to kill off the Union leadership. Seward was attacked as he recovered from a carriage accident. He was stabbed multiple times, but not fatally. He was saved by the cast around his neck and chest, which blunted the blows of the knife. Seward's right cheek was nearly cut off in the attack. In later years, he always had his left side photographed to hide the scar. Seward 
Seward stayed on as Andrew Johnson's Secretary of State after Lincoln's death. After the war was over, Seward invoked the Monroe Doctrine to force the French, who had invaded Mexico during the Civil War, to leave Mexico. Mexico's sovereignty was secured by the United States. During his time working for Andrew Johnson uh, came his most famous action, purchasing Alaska from Russia in 1867. It was mocked as Seward's icebox and Seward's folly, but no one believes it was a mistake now with all the natural resources the U.S. has gained. Seward's wife Frances and his daughter Fanny died soon after the Civil War ended. Seward became very lonely and he retired after uh, Johnson's administration ended. He began to hang around with Olive Risley, the daughter of a family friend who was of the same age as his late daughter. When Seward embarked on an around-the-world trip, she was one of the people accompanying him. People began to gossip about it in an inappropriate relationship, but Seward apparently simply missed his daughter. On the trip, he formally adopted Olive. When William Seward died on October 10, 1872, she received an equal share in his will. Seward was important in establishing the new Republican Party, assisting Lincoln during the Civil War, and expanding the U.S. with the acquisition of Alaska. Thank you for watching Abbreviated Bios.